Greetings, Church, and all those who are tuning in on our YouTube channel. Now, over the last three weeks in our series for Missions Month, we've heard the life stories of different missionaries. We heard about Singaporeans Andrew and Belinda Ng, and how they served providing medical care in a remote village in Niger, Africa, a place that one traveller called a God-forsaken place. But how through their ministry there, the people there came to know that they were not forsaken by God. We heard about Amy Carmichael, the young Irish woman whom God led in the late 19th century, first to Japan and then to India, where she served for over 50 years, reaching out and rescuing women and children from temple prostitution, serving the most forsaken in society. And you know, sometimes we hear such missionary stories and we think, oh, that's nice, oh, that's inspiring, but I could never do anything like that. We may not even want to or dare to pray to ask God how he may want us to serve him. We immediately put up all sorts of roadblocks. I'm not good enough, we may say. It sounds too difficult, too uncertain. What about my plans for the future? And this may be especially so for families. We ask, what about our children? What about their future? Would God call our family to go through all the difficulties and uncertainties of serving in a foreign place? Today I would like to share, briefly in this time that we have, the lives of two families whom God called to serve in the mission field. Neither family would claim that their stories are anything as dramatic or inspiring as Andrew and Belinda's or Amy Carmichael's. But they are stories that are close to us. Stories of real-life struggles along the way. Stories of step-by-step -step obedience. Stories of small, mustard-seed faith. Stories of a big, faithful God. The first story starts with a young man who had grown up going to church every Sunday. As a teen, he heard missionaries come to share at church, and he felt inspired. But then he immediately dismissed the thought, thinking, I'm not good enough. Then in his 20s, he drifted further and further away from God, caught up in seeking his own direction, which only led him deeper into sin. Until one day, by God's grace, he cried out to God to change his heart, and the Lord started to do a work in his heart. Through a series of experiences serving alongside missionaries from all around the world, his eyes were opened to see how big God is and how much God loves every person and every people group in the world. And the young man then started to make preparations to serve long-term in the mission field. He was quite prepared to go as a single, but God had other plans. Enter a young lady who had grown up in a different church, but as a teen, she was introduced to missions by her Sunday school teachers and inspired by biographies of missionaries who had dedicated their lives to serving God, wherever he called them. She too started to seek if God was calling her to serve in missions. Her heart was for the marginalized people who were forsaken by society, but not forsaken by God. And so she pursued her degree in psychology and social work, wanting to use her skills to help others and to serve God wherever he called her. Then in 2002, God in his providence led this young lady and a young man to sign up for the, young, for the same youth expedition project to help an orphanage in India. And during the trip, they got to talking and soon discovered they had a mutual calling for missions. They started out as friends, but fast forward a couple of years and they got together and eventually got married in 2006. Here's a photo of that young man and young lady. He had more hair then, but I think she still looks the same. And that was really just the beginning of our story. We knew God wanted us to go into the mission field, but we didn't know when exactly. Two years after Sarah and I got married, we had our first child, and a couple of years after that, we thought it could be the time to prepare to go into the mission field. We started our preparations and applications 
But in the process, seeking godly counsel, we realized that we needed to strengthen our marriage, our relationship, before stepping out into the re all the challenges and pressures of the mission field. So we put our missions preparation on hold as God started to do his healing work in our marriage. And in the midst of that, we had our second child. And in all the busyness that came with that, our mission's calling seemed to fade into the horizon. However, two years after that, during a time of seeking the Lord for his direction, he reminded us of the trajectory that he had been putting in our lives. He renewed that sense of calling to go to a particular field. However, along the way, there were still all sorts of questions and doubts. Could we really give up so many nice things here and adapt to a simpler life there? How would living overseas affect our kids? Would they become distant from their grandparents and relatives? Would they miss out on the opportunities in Singapore that their peers enjoyed? One day as we were packing up all the things in our flat in preparation for our departure, Sarah sat staring at the piles of things we had to reorganize and to prioritize what to keep. And she heard the Lord asking her, do you love me more than these? At that point, it was a hard question to answer, and she just broke down when she heard it. But again, she was reminded that God has done so much for us. And was reminded of the lyrics from the song that go, What can we do? What can we give that you have not given? What do we have that is not already yours? All we possess are these lives we're living. That's what we give to you, Lord. And her reply was yes. Yes, I do, because all these earthly possessions came from you. But it also became clear to us that following his call does mean that we have to pay a price. It's not easy to let go, but we do it out of obedience. But we were also reminded that whatever our Father gives us, we need to hold on to lightly so that we will be ready to let go and move on when he wants us to. We realized that if God had been preparing us to go, we could only but trust him to take care of our needs and our children's needs. And so in 2015, we took that step of faith into the mission field. At this juncture, I'd like to introduce you to another family who's serving in missions to share with you their story. I had the privilege of getting to know them earlier this year. Their names are Ben and Ernsin, and they also have two daughters. The Lord has called them to Thailand, and the church missions committee got to know of them, and the church has been supporting them this year as friends of YCKC. And as I got to know them and heard their story, I realized that there are many similarities with Sarah and my story including the struggles and concern for the children. Ben shared his testimony of how he joined missions trips organized by his church since his teenage days. The passion to serve and to do missions was always very strong right after he returned from the trips. But as time went by, the passion subsided, he admitted. However, God led him to experience something different during his uni days. He felt the calling to do missions in university after he came to Thailand for a short-term mission trip. And after the trip, the love and burden for the Thais was strong in his heart. He went back to Singapore and took up a module in university to learn the Thai language. He didn't even have to do this module as it was his final semester before graduation. And if he were to fail the module, it would affect his graduation. But because of his faith, the faith and the call to do it, he took up the module and enjoyed it thoroughly. He says he even remembers what he learned after graduation. And Ernstin shares her testimony. She says this, The call for me, for her to serve full-time, was during the period before collecting her O-level results. The call was to do full-time ministry in church after finishing a music teacher course at the Nanyang Academy of Fine Arts and the National Institute of Education and to serve a five-year bond with the Ministry of Education. It was an, at an altar call in, at a youth camp. She was sure that the call was from God 
because she's not usually the person who is daring enough to walk up in front of the stage or to declare anything in front of a group of people. And there were many confirmations along the way that this was the route that God wanted her to go. Her call to do missions came in university when she had the burden to do missions overseas and a chance to serve in the missions area in Christian fellowship and participate and lead a team to do a short two-week mission stint in northern Thailand. And together, Ben and Unseen, they shared this. We knew that God wanted us to do missions, but we only took this calling to do missions more seriously and took practical steps to prepare in 2017 when we attended a missions weekend camp. God prompted us to trust and obey Him. And through our mentors in the camp, He challenged us to gather at least 50 prayer warriors to pray for us as we prepared. And so, they took some active steps, gathering prayer warriors, sending updates periodically, going to Thailand with their first child, Naomi, in 2017, and for a, a vision trip again in, uh, De in the December that year. And their little girl, Naomi, was just nine months old when they first brought her for the short-term mission trip. And there they felt the call to serve in Ayutthaya during the vision trip when they heard about the unreached community there. In 2018, they could not visit Thailand due to a difficult pregnancy, but God continued to give them the burden for Thailand. They visited Ayutthaya again, this time as a family of four, in 2019. Then COVID happened in 2020. But finally, in 2021, after months of fundraising and preparation, they flew to Thailand to start their full-time language and cultural learning. And after one year, they relocated to Ayutthaya in February this year. And they shared this. The truth is, we resisted many times and negotiated with God, but God used many opportunities to encourage us to go for it. We are here now and we came with peace in our hearts. We're not sure what the future holds exactly. Things can change, but we are trusting that our God will lead us. Now at this point, you may be wondering, how do families like ourselves or Ben and Unsin deal with the very real issue of our children's education and well-being? And I pose this question to them. What kind of questions, concerns or reservations did you or others who know you have about bringing your kids into the mission field? And how did you resolve them? And they, they shared this. Many people were concerned about our children's education and worried that they may not be able to make it should they go back to Singapore. And the truth is, we are also concerned about it. We had a vision trip in 2017. One of the aims Ben had for the trip was to find a perfect plan for children's education. However, the missionaries' families that we met did not have any perfect plan for their children. God planned it out for them, and their response was just to obey Him fully. So after hearing their stories, we prayed about it and came to a decision that we will pray and choose to obey God's calling for us. They said, they shared, We came to Ayutthaya in 2019 and met with the former team of missionaries there. They homeschooled their children as there were no suitable schools for English education. And after we went back to Singapore, COVID came and we had to put a pause to coming to Thailand as missionaries. But it was during that time that Unsin took no pay leave from work and stayed at home to take care of the children and attempted homeschooling. And they're still homeschooling their children. They have plans to homeschool till at least primary six and hopefully till secondary four, they said. And they said this, we're not 100% sure of how things might turn out but we are managing this as a family and have regular chats with the children about their needs and concerns. Though there are uncertainties, we will pray and obey God in every decision that we make as a family. As parents, we want to take care of our children and meet their needs, the physical, cognitive, emotional or spiritual, as best as we can. But they also thank God that there is a care group for their children who prays regularly for them and they share their prayer requests and needs and concerns with them for prayer. They go on to share this. It's a joy to serve with our children. As they follow us wherever we go, they are great supporters and also the open doors to conversations. It helps us connect with other families who have children. It's also a joy to witness firsthand the growth and development of our children. The challenge is to manage the amount of time to focus on work. We need to ensure that the needs of the children are taken care of. We make an intentional effort to make sure that we 
Tell the children beforehand of the plans and we include their suggestions as we plan out our days and weeks and months. It is a blessing to be able to serve together as a family, they shared. And Sarah and I can relate to much of what Ben and Unseen have shared. We experience many blessings serving together as a family and seeing our children's faith in action. Often God would use our children to remind us of His grace and truth when we needed it the most. Although we went to a place where there was a small international school run by believers, so we didn't have to try homeschooling, we were never 100% sure how things would turn out, how our kids would adapt to school and life there. But we could only trust that God knew the plans He had for us and our kids, a plan for their welfare and not their harm. Although there were many challenges along the way, there, were all, there was also much grace given by God. And towards the, the end of our second year in the mission field, our faith in God's good plans was really tested as our family met trial after trial, especially when we saw how our children were affected by decisions we had to make to serve Him in overseas. It felt like a very dark period, and we knew that if we want, He wanted us to continue serving Him in the mission field, we needed to hear from Him clearly again. And thankfully, we have a Heavenly Father who loves us and knows us intimately, when we made a short trip back to Singapore for some visa applications, he used a very timely sermon here at a Sunday service to remind us of the urgent need to reach the unreached. During the message and the worship songs we sang, our Father ministered his love to us and we were reminded that he himself did not withhold his only son who came to this earth to save us. How heartbreaking it must have been to see his son, Jesus, on the cross paying for our sins, but he did it to restore our relationship with him. Being reminded of this love reaffirmed our calling to make him known to the nations. And there was also a deep assurance that God knows the pain that we go through when we see our children struggle. And he loves them even more than we do and will care for them. This assurance was our anchor as we returned to the mission field for our third year of service. But then halfway through in, into that third year of service, circumstances beyond our control led, us to, led to us having to leave the field at a very short notice. Coming back to Singapore so suddenly and unexpectedly, we did not know what the future held. We didn't know how our children would adapt back to life and to school here. The first six months was especially difficult for us and especially for our older girl but we eventually saw God's grace and mercy, and there was a breakthrough. And now in the almost five years that we've been back, we continue to see God's hand of grace, leading us to different areas of service, providing for all our family's needs. And in the midst of this, we have experienced the church's prayer support and encouragement, and the care and concern shown to our children. And this brings me to another important dimension of serving in missions as a family that I would like to highlight, which is relevant to all of us. You see, we are all called into God's family, and as His family, His church, we are called to work together to fulfill His mission. That's another way of looking as, at family in missions. As a family of God, as a church, we are called to work together to fulfill His mission. I'd like to share with you a quote from this article titled The Importance of Families in Global Missions. Reaching the nations requires those who will go. Prayerfully, many families will say yes. Those who go will walk through difficulties and hardships as they work cross-culturally. We must both celebrate them and support them well. But for every missionary that goes, dozens of families are needed to send them. For how will they go unless they are sent? Romans 10 verse 15. We must value all the roles that believers play in seeing the unreached reached. Celebrate the senders, the families who strategically use their finances to support workers and efforts among the unreached. Celebrate families who are reaching the nations through faithful intercession in prayer. 
celebrate the welcomers, those who intentionally seek out and love the nations around them, refugees, international students, foreign workers, business workers, etc. Celebrate the mobilizers, those who lead in the church and across the community to help others catch a vision for the nations. How would our church culture be different if every family believed they had a strategic part in God's story of blessing the nations? Can you imagine the impact that we could have as a church, as a family of God? The question I leave with each of you is, what part do you think you or your family could play in fulfilling God's calling to bring the gospel to all the world? What obstacles are in your way? Or what roadblocks have you placed between you and God's calling? Instead of laying obstacles in front of what God is calling you to do, lay those things at his feet. Give it to him. It may be your five-year plan, your 10-year plan, your career plan, your plan for your children's education. Whatever your situation, will you commit those things to God and trust him to lead, to guide and to provide? Ask him. Ask him how he wants to use your marriage, your family or your singlehood as part of his plan to bring the good news of Jesus to the world. It could be to go, or to support, or to welcome outsiders into your home. It could be all of these things. It could be done in different seasons of our lives. It could be to take up opportunities to study or to work overseas, learning about other cultures, seeking the Lord for opportunities to be an ambassador for Christ. And as a church, we too shall ask how he wants to use us as a church family to send out and support workers and to welcome those from outside into our church family. So how will you respond? You can go on a short-term mission trip, for example. The church and various SGCs are planning for several trips next year. And also you can go for opportunities to live in another culture, for work or for studies. You can intercede, pray for mission work and missionaries, like our church missionaries and friends of YCKC whom we are supporting, like Ben and Unsin's family, for example. You can volunteer, advocate for missions, volunteer to show hospitality to those from other countries or cultures. You can equip yourself and your family to live with a missions mindset. Learn about digital missions, businesses missions, using your profession for missions. And of course, you can give financially to support our missionaries and mission work. If you haven't already done so in previous weeks, and if you're a YCKC member or visitor, we invite you now to fill in the form in response to indicate how you would like to respond in obedience to God's calling to bring the gospel to all the world and to trust him for all that is needed to do so. May God bless you and grant you his grace to do so, just as he has for all those who have gone before in obedience to him. Let's pray. Lord, we Thank you for your love for us, Lord. That you first loved us. That you gave your only Son, Lord. As a sacrifice for the forgiveness of our sins. And that's the only reason that we can come before you, our holy, our holy and loving God. Lord, we want to commit to you all that we've heard, I'm going to pray that you would lead and guide each of us individually and as, a, and as families and as a church to ask where you want us to go, what you want us to do, how you want us to bless the nations. And may you grant us the grace and the strength and your spirit's empowerment to take those steps of obedience and faith. 
And we look forward, Lord, to seeing your wonderful work in our lives and in our community, in our church, in the nations around us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.